Hey there, YouTube fam. And this is our first ever fireside chat. And look at the glorious cedar fire we have in there. Throw a few pieces on for you guys. Welcome. Just fed the dogs over here. They're finishing their dinner. You know, look, if you saw the other video, look at this beautiful cedar. It smells amazing in here. I call it Mountain Man Cologne, y'all. <laughs> well, hello, welcome. I hope you're having a beautiful start to your week. Or wait, no, it's the middle of the week. It's Wednesday. And you made it to Cold Case Calls again. And we're here in the cabin. I can show you all a little bit. It is freaking freezing still out here, y'all. Snowy and freezing. Um, it's been getting down to about 10 degrees, though, instead of negative. So that's something to be grateful for, you know. Mom always said you got to count your blessings. Yeah. I invite you at home to do that. Count your blessings. We get this camera situated here. See if that looks all right. I gotta get the fire in there. There we go. That's a little better. Hey. Gotta get the bowls out because they spar over dominant. So, welcome. Welcome to the cabin. See the beautiful fire in there? We're staying warm out here on the Mesa. It's been a cold and bitter week for sure uh, but we're hanging in there uh, got a lot of stuff coming up on the plate so I'm glad you made it and um, I just wanted to start out by burning some sage so this is white sage I'll show you and I wrapped it in this bomb while I picked the sage myself and this stuff is really good for warding away evil negative energy and negative spirits um, in your house, around your body, around yourself. And um, it's really good. Uh, it smells amazing. It's kind of like got an incense set smell. But this is Colorado white sage here. I just like to start this out and I just kind of brush it around. I do put it around the cabin. And it just kind of purifies everything. It purifies, you know, I'm out here on the Southern U uh, Native American Reservation. And uh, there's a lot of, a lot of crazy murders and fights over land and all kinds of stuff happen right here in this area. So, uh, you know, you never know about the, the spirits and the negative energy and the demonic um, spirits that are around. So I had a crazy dream, and I'm not going to talk about it right now, but I had a crazy dream where I was visited by a demon, but uh, we won't go into that right now. So I want to start out by saying the new segment. So here's the thing. Uh, YouTube is all about niche and going with your niche. And uh, so my new niche, guys, is we're searching. We'll never stop doing searching. Our number one goal for this channel is to search for missing persons and bring closure to families that's the number one goal here but in between our searches i need filler because youtube requires you to be consistent on a weekly basis like you know monday went whenever you post every week it's got to be like that all the time so the new days i'm starting is sunday wednesday and friday around five o'clock mountain time i live in colorado so colorado mountain standard time uh and you can count on me coming live or not. I'm going to be start, I'm going to be mixing in lives. We're going to be doing the off grid cabin segment. Uh, and we're going to be doing the survival segment. And we're still going to be talking about searches, which what, what we're going to be doing the fireside chats, which is kind of what we're doing now. Talking about upcoming searches, uh, what's going on with cases and certain stuff. Um, so, uh, so that's what's going on with that. Uh, Monday, like, uh, like I said, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, you guys can set the notification, and I'm going to start uh, putting out notifications to let you know when I'm going to be dropping the videos. I didn't today, 
I uh, ran a little late to do that, but um, uh, this Friday and next Sunday, there will be notifications going out, so that covers that. Um, <clears throat> so I want to let you guys know, you know, I don't know if you heard on my last live, you know, I, I've deleted several videos, so I'm not sure if the, the, the information got out, and once again, I can't talk about this, I got to keep it real close to the vest, yeah, that smells good. But uh, I have met with CBI, y'all, and um, so all I can tell you is I've met with CBI, and the wheels of justice are turning, guys. You want to stay tuned. Things are happening. Uh, that's all I can say about that. But in regards to that case, um, the Suzanne Morphew case, uh, I just wanted to point out, you know, I've been doing a lot. Of, I've had a lot of sleepless nights finding this revolver and the torn and the piece of sheet. The bloody section of the bed sheet. Uh, I've had a lot of sleepless nights thinking and thinking and thinking and, and trying to come up with scenarios and pot and possibilities that are similar. And what I've come up with is, I, you know, listen to this. So I want you to know that the helmet that was thrown out the window appeared that it, it was like slung out the passenger window. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with that. But the helmet was within slinging distance right off of that Highway 50, right? Let me tell y'all, the, the revolver was slinging distance out the passenger window going down that dead-end road. I mean, that's a similarity, guys. What are the chances of that? Uh, somebody's slinging stuff out the window. And I just made that comparison like, you know, like that's a coincidence that the helmet and all this evidence seemed like the bike was thrown out. Then the helmet was slung probably the cell phone was slung out the window somewhere going down that 50 and then we're going to go back to spring to search for that cell phone um i'm going to take them i'm going to get them i'm in the process of getting a really nice metal detector and uh, i'm going to hit that spot as soon as the snow melts before the green hits the trees in spring i'm going to hit that spot real good i'd like to hit it with a metal detector when everything's laid down right in mud season so i'm going to be watching uh moffett and salida areas and uh when the snow melts we're gonna be on it i mean i'm telling you i'm stepping up the game with this channel you hear that youtube i'm stepping up my game i'm not gonna give up i've had this uh channel going posting videos like this for a year and i'm due i'm due to have this channel be successful and that was my new year's resolution is to never give up and to make this channel success so <clears throat> our number one goal for this channel we are volunteers first and we're bringing closure to families first. That's our, our very first of, of our niche in our in, at Cold Case Cause. But we will also be, like I said, we're going to do the survival and then the log cabin segments. And those are fillers in between searches so I can still post these videos, be consistent on YouTube, hustle up money for these searches. And I don't have to, like, try to sell paintings because I don't know if y'all know, but I got a little uh, flack back from the... Chelsea people searching for Chelsea Graham for trying to sell paintings to you know to like using her name uh, So I just deleted that video, you know I'm not trying to use any of the victims names from here on out to make any type of money for even anything Even if it's just for gas to get there to search for that person So, you know, you got to be real careful with <clears throat> when you're dealing with searching for missing people there's a lot of sensitive emotions going on with search teams and families and uh, there's a lot of scam artists out there, and that's the last thing I am trying to do, guys, is be a scam artist. You know, I'm just trying to uh, search for people who we volunteer. Every bit of work we put in is volunteer work, so we never take money from anybody ever and never have. So that that goes to all you Chelsea Grimm search people that are, are, have watched my channel and are wondering about that. Um, but we are still going to be down there soon, so stay tuned. I mean, I'm not giving up on the Chelsea Grimm. I'm just ca ca trying to wait for this polar vortex to move on and you know they got a bunch of snow down there so i'm kind of letting it wait, waiting for the snow to melt we got a bunch of 40 50 60 degree days going on down there soon so that's i'm gonna wait for the snow to melt back down uh so it'll be <clears throat> easy searching not only that i wanted to uh bring up an, a theory that i thought about with chelsea Grimm. there's a uh Every year, there's a place called Quartzite, Arizona, and they have big festival. They have a festival there. It's like a big rock festival, and they do uh, muse, live music, and it's like a place where all the snowboards go and camp out. It's like a huge camping area. It's a big, pretty much a big party for older folks, snowbirds. And uh, I'm just thinking, like, off of a whim, maybe go down there and search around Quartzite and the crowds down there and see if I can't bump into 
Chelsea Grimm down there. I mean, who knows? She could still be alive. She could have, you know, met a, a guy or something. And, you know, it, it, she could not, you know, the worst could not be the truth here. So she could still be out there and just, you know, trying to start a new life or uh, who knows. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed on that and see if we can't go down there. And I mean, what are the chips? That would be cool, huh? Bumping into her alive. Like, that would be, that'd be super sweet. But fingers crossed. I don't know. It's, you know, it's a far stretch, but. You know, I know there's a lot of people searching down there big time for her, and there's just no hide or hair, so it's really strange. Unless someone took her away from there, you know. But we won't speculate anymore about Chelsea Graham, and I and I wanted to make a correction. She was 32, and not 28. So I made I made that mistake and caught heck for it. So my bad, guys. Uh, I get a few, uh, but we're aiming to be more factually professional here at Cold Case Cause. Um, so I also wanted to throw something out, something else out regarding the Suzanne Morphew remain site. Um, <clears throat> this is another thing I thought about, uh, during restless nights, but you remember the section of the sheet that we found, which we believe to be a section of a bed sheet, uh, that believed to have blood on it, splotchy blood, uh, like from, it looked like where the. The sheet had been folded up and the splotches had been on there and now it's uh, opened up. Um, but there are poke holes in the sheet. And I kind of put two and two together. I don't know if you saw the, the winter video during uh, right around Christmas. I put that second revisit to the Suzanne Morphew site. And I point there, there was a tree there, the cottonwood tree, you know, the famous tree. And I said, man, that, that's an eagle's nest up there. Y'all, I started thinking about it. That section of the bed sheet had poke holes in it. And I think, here's my theory. That sheet was wrapped around somebody or something and in the ground. And that eagle, you know, eagles are carrying birds too. They will go, maybe that bird of prey was down there and using his beak trying to pull that section of the bed sheet up out of the ground and tore that piece of the sheet off. That would make sense why that section of the sheet was ripped up out like it was pulled up and ripped out of the ground. You know, that was a shallow grave there. So, I mean, this is all allegedly in speculation, guys. So, please. Uh, but I'm starting to think that that's where that section of the sheet came from. Because CBI had already searched most of that area, you know. So, that piece section to be just off. Just one section of a sheet, you know, like this big. And uh, it had, you know, that weird staining on it. But then the, it had several poke holes. And a lot of people commented, it looks like stab holes. And it could be stables, but it also, I'm just thinking what kind of bird or prey or, you know, if it was a coyote, there'd be like teeth marks, you know, like actual uh, teeth marks uh, equally apart. But I don't think it was a coyote. I think it was a, that bird or prey. I think that eagle was yanking on that, that sheet and it was stuck down in the ground and he's pulling up at it and ripped a, a section of it off, uh, allegedly. But that, I'm just, it's just a theory. So, but... <clears throat> Keep your fingers crossed, guys. Say a prayer. We're not going to give up. Uh, justice is going to be served for Suzanne. So, um, I, I I lose so much sleep thinking about this case. I'm just waiting for any day for some good news. But just know I have met with the right people and the right things are going down. So, if it was nothing, they wouldn't be talking to me, y'all. So, um, so yeah, we got the pause for the Chelsea Grimm search. Um, don't worry, guys. It's going to go down as soon as this dang vor polar vortex moves on. I think it's a damn weapon of war from Russia sent from Putin or something to, like, try to freeze us out. Uh, man, it's been wicked weather. But I'm, and I saw it's all going down through the Midwest and the East Coast. Man, y'all are getting it hard right now. I, I say in a prayer for all, all the good people in the Midwest and on the East Coast that are going through it right now with the weather. Hopefully, y'all are staying warm. Blessings to you. And, um, so what else have we got here? Uh, guys, so I got to tell you a little story real quick. Every morning I go out and I watch the sunrise and it's beautiful out here. And it's kind of like my meditation. I meditate and watch the sunrise. It's freezing cold and miserable, but I feel like it's like, you know, like <laughs> boot camp, like meditation boot camp. Uh, but <clears throat> So I was out, guys, I was meditating, and I, I always make my coffee, and I let the sun come up and bake on my face, and I drink coffee and just meditate and think about things. And Y'all, I was drinking my coffee the other day. This is probably a 
couple of weeks ago. And uh, I heard <coughs> a horse, a horse. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, y'all. So I started, I, I, I got a buddy, an old farmer. I called him up and he goes, man, there's wild horses back there still from the old uh, Southern Ute days. So I, I, my property is actually out here on the Southern Ute Indian Reservation. They call it Indian Reservation. And uh, I like to say Native American to give respect. But um, I heard the horse, right? So guys, listen to this. I, I, I have cameras up all over this property just to kind of, you know, in case someone sneaks around here or whatever, there's some people that own some land near here and they're kind of crazy but i got y'all listen to this i got pictures of a wild southern ute native american mustang a wild horse y'all and uh he came walked right in front of the camera and uh several pictures so i want you to stay tuned uh, i'm thinking friday maybe friday or maybe next sunday uh we're gonna do the wild mustang special and it's just, man, it's so cool. It gives me goosebumps to know there's wild horses that still around, wild Mustangs. And, y'all, he's super muscular, and he's got a long mane. It's all dreaded out. It's super long, and it, he's like a stallion. And what's crazy is the name of the area where he's living is called Red Horse Gulch. And get this, guys, he's a red horse, and this big muscular uh, Mustang. And uh, he's direct descendant of the uh, Southern Ute natives and the Apache J Jicaria uh, Apache Indian Reservation is just south of here. And it's either an Apache horse. You know, it, they all came from the Spanish. So those horses were introduced here by the Spaniards, the Spanish uh, conquistador expeditions that came through here, you know, way, way back in the day. I don't know the exact time period, but um, they're the ones that actually gave horses to North America. And that all the horses around here came from the Spaniards. So, uh, when the, when the Apaches got a hold of horses, they, they were a force to be reckoned with. They were a wartime tribe. Uh, they were badass. And the Southern Utes were tough as too. Then they got, uh, so a lot of the horse is up here. You know, the Southern Utes were kind of like raiders, kind of like the Comanche. They were fierce. So, uh, y'all, there's a horse, there's a Native American horse out here. And I see, I've been seeing like piles of scat around, like fresh horse scat. I'm like, what is it? And so I thought someone was riding a horse through here and stuff, but it's not, y'all. It's it's a for real wild Mustang of co Southern Colorado, and it's so special and so rare. You know, it's a rare as hen's teeth guy. <laughs> yeah, but he's super strong and muscular. And uh, I heard him whinny the other morning. I mean, it blew my mind. I was like, that's a freaking horse. So the property I live on butts right up to hundreds of thousands of federal land blm land it goes all the way to farmington and west all the way out to the four corners i mean it's a huge area maybe not hundreds of thousands of acres but tens of thousands and it's all like bureau of reclamation land and that's where this horse lives is out there on that bureau of reclamation i don't go out there you know i don't go out there guys but uh i seen him man I, I so i got pictures of the horse on the game camera so i can't wait to show you guys so hopefully uh, we'll get that going maybe this Friday, if not next Sunday. So, beautiful red horse, muscular. I mean, a stallion, a real deal stallion. And, you know, I think about him out here in this negative temperature all by himself. Like, man, that's a tough life, buddy. Me and you are together in this. <laughs> I'd like to try to get him to come over here and get on this property. And, I'd, you know, I'd feed him and if I could tame him. But, I mean, he's a real, he's wild like a bear, you know, like he, if he saw a human, he'd probably run and try to attack you. I know they try to attack dogs. Like, if you have your dogs around and that sucker sees a dog, he thinks it's a coyote and he'll come and stomp it to death. That's a little tip, y'all, if you're ever out in the woods and you come up upon a horse that has gotten away and has gone wild, that horse will stomp your dog to death. And he'll attack you, too, so be careful out there, y'all. Because there's still wild mustangs around here in the West, you know, in certain places. So, but I have one here on my property, guys. It came through my property. So freaking cool. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a new segment coming up. And also, so I'm updating my channel. I'm updating my life. I'm updating my vibe, my niche, whatever you want to say. Like we're going new and we're going hard in the paint this year, 2024, at Cold Case Call. We got the new filler episodes going in, the new segments. We're hitting it hard with the survival as soon as spring comes, y'all, I'm hitting it. I'm going, we're sticking right back with the Suzanne Morphew. We're going back looking for that cell phone. 
Uh, so I know a lot of y'all say, oh, that cell phone got thrown out in the trash, and there's a good chance it did. But there's also a good chance there was more evidence being, because the last place that cell phone pinged was in between the helmet and the bike area, I think, allegedly. Guys, don't, don't like, stick with me on the, on the particulars. But uh, I think it's in between. So uh, we, I want to search the section of the highway on Highway 50 in between the helmet and the bike. Because that's where the phone last pinged, guys. How easy. If he's slinging stuff out the window, helmet. He, and, you know, he goes a little further, the phone. You know, who, who knows what else, is, what other evidence is on that stretch. So what I'd like to do in the spring is get off at about slinging distance from that highway and walk the entire way. I know it's several miles, but we just walk for miles with the dogs and just zigzag right in mud season, you know, and see what we can find with a metal detector. So that, those, that's the plans. That's what's on the plate, guys. I really appreciate you, uh, you tuning in. Please like and subscribe, man. That's all I got going right now is this. Like and subscribe. So I've, I've made it over the thousand subscriber mark. So now I can get this channel monetized, but I still need like 1500 watch hours. <sighs> so it's always something. So I, that's why I'm starting to crank these videos out so I can get this channel monetized so I can really hit these searches hard, guys. Because, uh, man, it's tough. I've spent every penny I've ever owned on looking for missing people. You can go down through my channel list and see all those missing people. I used to have savings. Not anymore, guys. <laughs> Uh, but I want you to go to my channel and check out the new banner on my channel. I spent a lot of time working hard. I got the new Canva app and I'm trying to figure out how to like edit. I don't know how to edit videos. I, I bet y'all can know that. I do all this in one take. I, you know, like this one right here, one shot, y'all <laughs> click, edit, done. <laughs> so cut, but I'm learning how to edit. That's why we're going to step it up with the thumbnails and, um, uh, the community posts, and I'm going to try to go live. I want to cover all the spectrums on YouTube so they have no reason not to jack my subscriber limit up. So, uh, But I got a new banner there. Tell me what you think down in the comments if you like the new banner. And um, that's pretty much all I got for right now, guys. I, I really appreciate you coming by. Got the water heating up. You can see the steam. We've been staying warm, though. Um, can't complain out here on the Mesa, even though it's been dreary and dark and kind of just freezing cold, man. But we're going to make it through. And we're going to hit the road soon and get on this Chelsea Grimm search. It's still coming up. So if you bought a painting and all, I, I saw I got a message that the paintings have arrived and all. So uh, you got it. I'm, st I'm happy that you're stoked about it. And, um, I just wanted to say thank all y'all so much for being here at Cold Case Calls. I can't do this without you. Your comments are what keeps this thing going for me, you know. Like, uh, we ain't making any money off this, but, like, the, the wonderful comments y'all give and the blessing is such a blessing. I'm so grateful for all y'all. And the, the dead is grateful, too. So, <laughs> but I want to say have a great weekend coming up. We're going to be going live on Friday. Haven't decided what the show is going to be. But thanks for stopping by on this first fireside chat here. Oh, man. I've been hiking a long ways, y'all. We got some tired puppies here. Say hi, Zoom. Say hi, Nip. Yep, she's been out partying today. I'm going to show you all around the cabin. There's a Grateful Dead banner. And that's what we do this channel for, y'all, is the great, great hope that the dead is grateful for us trying to bring closure to their families. Got the wood down there, y'all. Yeah. But thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss what I got coming up. Blessings. Have a wonderful evening.